Is it possible to make cake out of tomato soup? Today we're dialing the clock back to the late 1940s. So yes, today we are making cake with tomato soup. Many versions of this recipe exist, including ones that do not require eggs or butter, which I'll explain shortly. And if you would hit that like button and press subscribe, and feel free to leave a comment to let me know what recipe you'd like to see me showcase in a later episode. With the recipe I'm making today, I'm going to be taking one cup of sugar and a stick of butter. I'm going to blend those together, which I'm actually finding out that the best way to do that if you don't have a stand mixer is to just use your hand. This fork method, it doesn't really work that well, especially if your butter is not at room temperature. I'm going to add one egg, but I'm now going to tell you why you don't need to. Campbell's began in Camden, New Jersey in 1869, but released their first condensed canned soup, tomato soup, in 1897. The process of condensing and storing soup in a can aided in both affordability and preservation of the soup. During World War II, food rationing was utilized to make sure soldiers could be fed abroad. Although each country had their own rations, eggs and butter were two ingredients often limited which made baking difficult. Adding a can of tomato soup in replace of those ingredients worked, and I'll tell you why in just a minute. After the war, however, eggs and butter came back into the recipe, but the soup stayed because it added such a luscious, moist quality to the cake. And this is the version of the recipe that I'll be baking today. So I'm going to take a can of tomato soup and add a teaspoon of baking soda into it and give it a quick stir. The can of tomato soup was a great supplemental ingredient for this spice cake because it contained sugars from the tomato, which is a fruit, and helped sweeten the cake. Much like how carrot was added to puddings and cakes when sugar was hard to come by. And the butter and eggs could be replaced because besides sweetness, the cans contained pectins, thickeners, emulsifiers, and the tomato's natural acidity, which caused the acid-base reaction utilized in turn-of-the-century baking. This, of course, was a detail that I had forgotten, and it was amazing how fast elementary school science class came rushing back to my mind. So what was the purpose for causing this reaction? Tomatoes were being used as a supplemental ingredient here, but the acid in yogurt, buttermilk, and lemon juice was often used for the acid-base reaction while baking these cakes. Exactly like the grade school volcanoes, done with baking soda and vinegar. The base neutralizing the acid causes the formation of gas bubbles. These gas bubbles lead to a fluffier cake. You can do the same thing by adding seltzer to pancake batter for a really nice fluffy pancake. And a trick here is to work fairly quickly. You want to keep all of that carbon dioxide goodness within the tomato soup into the batter. You don't want it escaping. I made a mistake here. I kind of mixed it a little too vigorously, which flattened the batter slightly, but whatever. Adding a teaspoon of vanilla extract and stir that in loosely. Not like me. Uh, this actually went on about 20 seconds longer of me stirring. Now for the dry ingredients, I'm adding one and three quarters cup of flour. Yeah, most recipes say to sift it a few times. I didn't bother. One teaspoon of cinnamon, one teaspoon of nutmeg, and believe it or not, it's not too much, two teaspoons of ground clove. Don't forget a pinch of salt, and we're going to mix all these dry ingredients together with the wet. And while I was mixing the batter, I realized, yeah, I should have sifted that flour, so don't be like me. Sift your flour. Once the batter is mixed, go ahead and add in about a half cup of chopped walnuts and a cup of raisins. Fold that in. And getting out the pan, going to grease that up. Use a paper towel just to make sure every crevice is greased. You don't want any sticking of the cake. Pour the batter in and make sure that it is smoothed out for even baking. 
The origin of spice cake, surprise surprise, goes back to ancient Greece and Rome. And as the centuries went on, other ingredients were added to these spice cakes. The Dutch and Flemish had peppercoke, which actually used black pepper as one of the main spices. Even Genghis Khan made sure that his warriors were fed these spice cakes to improve their vitality and energy. Bake at 350 for 30 minutes. While the cake is in the oven baking, I'm going ahead and making the cream cheese icing. Now, I've never made a cream cheese icing before. It's actually really simple. I took two cups of confectioner sugar, powdered sugar, and a package of Philadelphia cream cheese, added two teaspoons of vanilla, and mixed them together. Again, I'm doing this fork thing. It doesn't work. I ended up just using my hands, which really worked out really nice. Uh, warmed it up and mixed it all together evenly. The cake's done, so I'm gonna get it out of the oven. It looks really nice, golden brown, but I'm afraid that it's gonna keep cooking around the edges so I get that springform pan off as soon as possible with clearly no regard to the heat. And like a fool, here I go, I am frosting the cake without letting the cake cool down. Big mistake, the frosting is melting everywhere. It's, uh, yeah, just let your cake cool down, but I got overly anxious. If you want a nice looking cake, cut thin layer off the top, make it even, and then add the icing once the cake's cool. Alright, let's try this. Tomato soup cake. It's really velvety. It's, you don't taste tomato soup. It's got a creaminess, uh, the spice. It's actually really good. It's an incredibly moist cake. It's an excellent secret ingredient into a cake. It's moist, it's sweet. It's, I thought that the spice was gonna be way too much and it's not. It's, it's definitely a spice cake, but it's a lot more subtle than I thought it would be. This is delicious. You have to try out the tomato soup cake. On a scale of one to 10, this is definitely a 9.5. This is very good. It's really hard not to give this a 10.